Hello! Today I wanted to make a video about British titles and honours, uh, which are two different things, uh, but there's so much complexity it can get a bit confusing. Uh, so first of all, let's dive into British titles. People with a title are called Peers of the Realm, and these are the members of the highest social order, uh, except for the royal family, uh, so the Queen and everybody like that. So there are five different levels or ranks, if you like, in British titles. And there is a male and there's a female version of each. So the highest one is Duke or Duchess. The next one is Marquess or Marchioness. Then Earl or Countess. Viscount and Viscountess. And then finally you've got Baron or Baroness. Now anyone who has a title is classed as a peer, which we'll explain in a second. A peerage can be hereditary, as in passed down, or it can be bestowed upon you for your lifetime. It's a fundamental part of the legal and political system in Britain, and it also is a constituent part of the honour system. So let's just talk about British Parliament for a second. So you've got the House of Commons, which is the lower house of Parliament. Uh, it has a fixed number of seats, which is 650, and all the members in the House of Commons are elected. This is the chamber that you see on Prime Minister's Question Times and on the news, where everyone's arguing and shouting. Then you've got the House of Lords, which is also called the House of Peers. This is the upper house. It's not fixed, so there's currently 790 lords, but that can change. And the members of this house are unelected, so they are appointed from within the peerage. The House of Lords is the only upper house of any bicameral parliament that's larger than the lower house. Cool, so I hope that explains titles a little bit. Let's move on to honours, which are a little bit more complicated. Honours are a means of rewarding individuals, bravery, achievement or service to the United Kingdom uh, and the British Overseas Territories, which can also include the Commonwealth. Honours are split into three sections, uh, with honours being the highest, then decorations and then medals. Medals are to recognise service on a particular operation for long service or good conduct, pretty much exclusively the armed forces. Decorations are to recognise specific deeds. They're usually awarded to military forces, but there are some, such as the George Cross, that can be awarded to Commonwealth citizens. Uh, some of the examples of decorations include the Victoria Cross, the Conspicuous Gallantry Cross, the Royal Red Cross, the Military Cross, etc. Okay, let's get into the most complicated of the three, which is the honour system, which is used to recognise merit in terms of achievement and service. Honours are split into classes called orders, which are graded to distinguish different degrees of achievement or service. There's six orders of chivalry and four orders of merit, which we'll come on to in a second. And twice a year, about 1,300 people are listed and can be nominated by pretty much anyone, but uh, are either approved by the Prime Minister, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defence, uh, and then they're sent on to the Queen, uh, who's the Sovereign, uh, to add to her list of nominations that she has herself. There are different ranks within each order, and each one entitles you to have different letters after your name. They also all come with their own ribbon, their own motto, and a load of other stuff. Okay, so let's look at some of the orders. The highest order in the land is the most noble order of the Garter, and only the Queen can nominate people into this. Then you've got the Order of the Thistle, which is uh, the Scottish equivalent, so you have to be from Scotland. The most honourable order of the Bath is the highest honour that you can be given by the government, or nominated by the government, and this is typically for senior civil and military. Then you've got the most distinguished order of St. Michael and St. George. This is typically for diplomats and colonial service staff members. You might remember in the film Skyfall, Judy Dench's character M was going to be offered uh, GCMG, which is the highest rank in this order, uh, Dame Grand Cross, which is the equivalent of a knighthood. Moving on, we've got some more orders here. The Order of Merit is particularly noteworthy because there's a limit of 24 living members at any one time. And there's one more order I wanted to talk about, which is probably the one that most people have heard of, or the one that most people are familiar with, which is the most excellent order of the British Empire. And this is typically where celebrities and upstanding citizens get awarded MBEs, OBEs, CBEs, and knighthoods. If the Queen's the head of state for your country, so obviously United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and you become a knight or a dame, then you're entitled to be a sir or a dame. So you can put a sir in front of your name or a dame. If the Queen's not the head of state, then the title is honorary and you can only use the letters and you're not allowed to call yourself sir. 
So I hope this video helped to explain the rather complicated honors system. If you want to learn more, I recommend you read it on Wikipedia. There's tons of information on there, tons of history, orders that don't exist anymore, examples where people have turned down honors or had honors stripped for them, all sorts of interesting stuff. So whilst it may seem a bit weird and a bit old-fashioned, it is a fundamental part of British culture.